recording in progress. Okay, uh, this is uh, a demo of uh, my typical day to day in doing development uh, with KDevOps. <clears throat> uh, based on the feedback that I got from the last live demo, one of the questions was how to do day to day development uh, testing patches. Uh, that typically depends on uh, your type of workflow that you're doing. Um, and for more, more complex setups, you typically end up with a series of large number of guests. However, you have to consider that if you're testing a patch, you typically should be able to localize uh, the issue with a reproducer. That would be your first objective. And then once you have a reproducer, you should be able to uh, localized testing onto one system. And that's typically how I work. I typically try to identify the issues on one system and then work on those that single system with a reproducer. And then I try to fix it. And, and, and once I have that, then I do a, a larger series of tests with baselines that I have. But um, in order to first uh, fix a patch and test it, I do localized uh, development with a simple proof of concept as such proof of concepts don't exist, then uh, I essentially need to develop one. I can give an example that's relevant as of today. Uh, David Hindel Hindelberg um, had reported an issue with uh, modules, uh, essentially creating uh, issues with um, running out of space with VMAP and, and, and that creating complaints. Uh, when you are in a system with uh, about 300 CPUs, um, that issue likely the root cause was actually due to the ACPI frequency modules being requested for each single CPU. Uh, however, it's not clear yet. Uh, if we have other types of issues in the kernel where we have similar types of multiple requests for a single module uh, where it's not needed. Uh, we have guards in place in the kernel for this um one of them is kmod that's the the component in the kernel that lets in kernel code request modules using request module api um then you that just basically calls mod probe uh, you also then have um user space that can call mod probe itself mod probe looks for modules prior to requesting it if it's already loaded it doesn't uh, request the module um However, there are races in between a module being loaded and user space detecting to see if it was present. So that's one a point of contention. The other one, a uh, series of other issues is that we, we have about three possible uh, places in, in which during FNIT module system call, we can actually do VM alloc type of allocation, VMAP, VM alloc or VMAP. Uh, they, one is during we do the first FNIT, uh, the kernel read from file. The other one is um, um, module decompression, if you have support for that. And then finally, we do specific allocations uh, for the module that we're going to keep in kernel. Um, anyway, that's a long story short of why I'm doing some development uh, changes that I'm, I'm working on. And one of the things that I'm working on right now is, is collecting statistics for some of these types of failures, given that it actually seems very common for uh, a lot of uh, requests to be coming into the kernel uh, where we shouldn't have such inefficiencies. Uh, and likely that could lead to a lot of contention if you are in a system where you're doing requests for multiple CPUs, even though you don't need them. Even though we have the issue solved for ACPI frequency modules, there are other places where perhaps we need to fix this. Anyway, let's get into it. So um, I'll do a simple change and then I'll try to demo how I go about doing my day-to-day -day for testing. So I, I have guinea pigs lying around other than my, my main workflows, uh, but at the same time, you can use the same large workflows that you're developing with to use that guinea pig and test the changes there. Uh, it's up to you really how you work. Um, I prefer to have small little guinea pigs lying around where I have just Linux next and then I have my Git trees uh, easily accessible to pull from. But I'll try to explain the general concepts. Um, this system right here that I'm demo demoing right now has uh, a large uh, partition, an NVMe drive, uh, using XFS. Um, and other than this, um, I will be trying to use a mirror for my Git trees. And I'll be demoing how to set that up. So let's, let's do a good clone first. 
okay dogs one we once we have that we'll do make many counting now when you typically select this um it will select to use a local mirror but more importantly it's it installs a local mirror setup that's a new feature um, if you're working with cloud solutions, all of the other stuff that typically is enabled, like enable hypervisor tunings, like that's what's KSM, you know, ZSwap, for instance, that's all useful if you're using vir local virtualization solutions. It also helps with <clears throat> uh, setting up uh, the right permissions. That way you can use virtualization as a regular user on any Linux distribution. Um, however, you're working with clouds, you, you don't need most of these things, right? Uh, however, it does enable the install of the mirror setup, though. So, um, just do that, and it'll do the right thing. And basically, all you have to do is just make, and that should actually just, you know, do set up the local mirror. Uh, if you don't want to do any of, enable all, all the other stuff, just basically install local mirror setup. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, this doesn't really apply, so, because you don't have the mirror yet. Uh, and then just run make. That essentially will set up the local mirror for you. We can just go ahead and demonstrate this. Don't really do anything other than just try to set and install the uh, the mirror system system D units. Um, now, what this is going to do is it it installs. Uh, obviously, it's doing the setup as if we're going to use KDOS for some other reason, but we're just setting up the mirror. But the 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 component that it is going to do is enable the system D units. Now we already have them enabled, right? So um, it's it's fine. So now we just enabled uh, system D units for um, stable uh, Linux Next and Keeming. Um, and we can verify their status right here. Uh, it took a while to actually get that right to work correctly uh, and to reflect the, the respective branches correctly. But anyway, that that's kind of it. Uh, now that we know that we have a local mirror, um, it begs the question why it did that. Uh, why did it default to detect that it wanted you to en enable it? It's because we had a mirror directory. If you had a mirror directory, it, it would assume that you want that. Otherwise, it would default to 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 non you know, to, to not enable it if, if it's on your first run. So you want to mk dirt slash mirror before you run kdops. That'll infer that you want this mirror set up for you. Uh, and I recommend to put the mirror into a large partition. Uh, so as you can see, this is pretty decently sized partition and it can mirror anything that I really want. Um, then if you want to actually run things and compile local tests on like an OES mod config, you can just get clone within that directory somewhere. So like on my mirror, let's see, other than that, we have code. So under that, I have McGrath. So I've get clone the trees there and I've referred to the slash mirror. So that way I can just do compile on OES config or any of those trees, for instance. Um, but now that you have slash mirror in place, whenever you get clone for the first time, it'll always detect that and enable it too. So let's now just get rid of this stuff and get clone again. Since it's there, slash mirror is present, it assumes that you have the mirror and it'll want you to use the local mirror. It'll look for it. So that's the in inferences that are done by kconfig for you. If it's there, then when you set, select any of the workflows that enable you to compile the Linux kernel, it'll basically look for it in slash mirror. In this case, it'll use 9p to expose that, um, uh, you know, git clone uh, to the guest. Where it will clone your Git tree, it will be under the uh, your Linux directory, which does not exist here. When you run make, it'll make sure, uh, well, actually, when you run make Linux, it'll make sure that it'll Git clone it. Not yet. If you do bring up and a lot of stuff on the guest, it won't do anything. Until you do make uh, make Linux, will it actually do the, the cloning of this Git tree? I think it's at that point. Um, anyway, it doesn't really matter because eventually once you do make Linux, you'll, you'll see it and Linux directory becomes the 
git tree. Now, let's see what that looks like. Um, here is a case where I already did that. Um, I'm, this is this guest was actually instantiated using the self tests uh, workflow. Uh, let's see what that looks like here. Um, and under the self test workflows, one of them is to enable me to test um, modules. So by default, it will enable all these different uh, tests. I basically just enabled this one, um, and that lets me run targets for running self tests for KMod. Um, and eventually, this should be extended to also support running module tests, uh, both from kmod.git user space and also other things like the new feature for stress ng. Um, anyway, now that I explained that, let's go back to an area where we have a guest already created for you. This guest was already, you know, brought up. My bring up came up. The guest is up. Um, I already have console for it, so I can just attach that console using verse h. Um, Linux next already was installed on it. Let's uh, switch to a screen session. So I use screen sessions here. I can SSH to it. Okay, and let's see where we are in terms of code. Um, here on the Linux directory under KDOPS, that's the Git clone. So it already Git clone. So I'm working on my development right now. So I rebase my tree just to go to a, a, a patch that I'm trying to fix because I spotted an issue. And based on feedback, I'm also trying to ramp up on a V2 series. Uh, so as you can see, the, the origin um, was actually the local mirror. So as such, I saved um, uh, network space and speed by, all, by just doing a Git clone against the NVMe drive that's local. Um, it, it is a separate NVMe drive. It doesn't really matter for me. Uh, it, it's fast enough for me. If you really are, are size constraint, you can obviously use the same path slash mirror and then, you know, set your k tree there somewhere. Um, another thing that this shows is that I have a remote for K-Org, uh, which is my own personal uh, Linux uh, Git tree where I maintain uh, modules, for instance, and branches for them. So as such, I, at any point in time, I could just, whenever I push uh, to uh, kernel.org, I can basically just get fetch here and it'll push my, bring, bring, bring my changes. And as such, as you can see, it actually did pick up some of my uh, pushes that I did to my kernel.org repositories. <clears throat> so that's one efficient way that I don't need to actually do my pushes or to, or, or, or anything that has to do with kernel.org on this system. I don't use the system to do any of that because I want my SSH keys in a separate system. So this is just for development. But I can just easily just get fetch the stuff here really fast. Um, obviously, I can also set up, if I wanted to as an option, a, a, a new mirror for that you know uh, repository. But I don't want to do that. I, think, I don't think that's necessary. Um, this should suffice. So. As such, I'm working on the, this this types of branches, the kernel.org module at lock ops to try to uh, create the uh, optimizations for memory pressure that uh, was reported. And I had used stressng to try to reproduce the issue. That was the proof of concept to a reproducer for the issues that given I don't have a system that has three, 300 CPUs, I'm trying to work uh, with a, a very uh, pathological type of test environment such as stressng provides to do a lot of definite module requests to see what the issue was. And it, it actually did reproduce the issues. Now that I have a, a possible solution for the issue, I'm trying to add statistics to try to identify other areas that might be lingering in the kernel for this. So um, this is the patching question right now. Um, and this is some old statistics. Uh, actually, this is a reflection of some, some new stats. But if you look at the the the, the the git tree, the public one, let's see, git remote, git branch. Let's look at this. And yeah, this one, this one actually shows us. So um, these numbers, 880, 890,000, those seem odd to me. So obviously I had to fix that. There's some enhancements here that I can do. So for, for instance, a counter, I could add a counter for each of the modules. This looks nice though, right? So, but 
one of the odd things though is that when I'm making changes now to do, support that, I'm 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 actually seeing some 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 issues. These uh, failed K read K mod bytes, they're also reporting the same numbers. That needs to be fixed. So I fix all that because they all should be very different. Uh, so I've worked on the changes here in 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 this new patch, and this is kind of like a screenshot of what it looked like after I fixed the numbers, but I still hadn't added the counters. When I added the counters, and also if you look at the last entry, Bert I, that seems odd. Uh, it could be a, um, a possible memory leak. Um, the memory leak uh, could be, well, it has been identified to one of the changes by Sun Liu, um, which splits, splits up the ELF allocations for when we're doing the module layout and allocate. So we essentially have split up um, well, song split up um, that type of uh, alloc allocations per section. So it could be that patch. Well, it has been identified to that patch. So it could be that memory leak that's happening that's causing these these, these print issues, uh, the last line. But I'm not sure yet. So uh, let's look at what I'm going to do. So one of the things that I am going to do is... And I added this new stats file, for instance. And uh, when I'm printing out the list, I'm simply going to take the mutex lock for modules mutex. And I'm going to pop up here. And that should be relatively safe. Uh, I don't expect people to be using, you know, this debug fest file, you know, heavily during boot up. So it's it's a relatively safe thing. It's a debug fest thing too. So it's not used in production, this should be safe, you know. Um, so that's essentially all I'm doing here. The reason why I'm not protecting that list on add is because it does assume that you have the um, the lock already held and it is actually held. So anyway, um, small little change, right? Dem demonstrates my day-to-day, -day, for instance, and I'm just going to do a uh, compile uh, on the host um, module mutants. Yes, sorry, let's go fix that. Oops. And uh, it's just going to rebuild this thing. On the guest, let's just be very cautious. I, I, actually, I don't need to. Uh, Let's just go to data Linux next. And once this is done, I can just run the make install argument. Uh, J100, you know, is insane for given only eight cores, but okay. Uh, this system right here on the host side has about 40 cores. This has eight B CPUs. All right, that's done. So I can just do this. These modules are assigned, by the way. And the reason you see that new name at the bottom, new new post post mutex, that's because I have a local version this dot whatever file. If you create this file or anything dot whatever and then append something, it'll append that to the the, the, the kernel uh, listing. Uh, as such, all the modules are packed for it, and when you install, it's under that this directory, the last one. Okay, so now I'm going to reboot and uh, I can bail out of here, I don't care. And I have the console writing, so I can select my kernel in case it's not the right one. And I have all these kernels, so this distro kernel, this is my kernel, this is the old one, this guy. All right, that booted. Let's see the SSH to this guy. And now let's do, uh, got the stats. That's odd. It's calling RQ pass a few times. It looks very different than the other one. And the other thing that seems really off is this guy. You know, that's in bytes. That should be megabytes, gigabytes. That doesn't make any sense. And that would be before we do even the module 
uh, layout and allocate. So something's still off. Got to go debug this. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much my day-to-day -day type of demo of how to use KDOps for your uh, testing a patch. And my recommendations for proof of concepts uh, for reproducers and um, things like stress and G you can use. Uh, anything like that, you know, to reduce or using FS tests, obviously you would, use, you would use an FS test test or block test, you would use a uh, block test test. If you're using CXL, you can use one of the unit tests or you can essentially work with Kimu and so forth. So it, every subsystem is different. Um, KitOps tries to bring these uh, testing frameworks uh, for access to developers through uh, main targets. Uh, so obviously, eventually I'll eventually run uh, some automation to collect these stats, for instance, uh, and so forth. It's really up to each subsystem to do what they want. Anyway, that's pretty much all I had. So I'm going to stop the recording and uh, hopefully this helps people for their day-to-day. -day.